Alright, so next we ask is ranking martial arts styles, fighting styles, tier list by Sensei Steph. Now, um, I will be doing the same, uh, doing a ranking, you know, ranking for tier list, um, probably next time because I'm trying to figure out how I'm supposed to do it. You know, do all the tier lists, so I might have to get started. But uh, if y'all can help me of how I'm supposed to do it, then um, comment down below or just DM me, cause um, soon I will try to rank all the lists that I could. So yeah, but um, Yeah, so we're going to get started in three, two, one, go. Take one, so. <clears throat> Taekwondo. A lot of you have heard me call Taekwondo safe space karate in the past. Uh. Perfect. Welcome back to the second installment of Tier Lists in Martial Arts. Uh, in this episode, I will be getting myself inevitably in trouble uh, because you guys asked me to. Thanks for that. appreciate that. In this episode, I will be breaking down and ranking the most popular martial arts styles. Uh, does this mean I will get in trouble because somebody's going to dislike what I say? Uh, yes. Uh, is this something that you guys asked me to do, thus leaving me no choice? A little bit. But with that being said, I'm going to be as honest as possible, and also keep in mind that you can take anything from any of these martial arts styles. A lot of them you can add together and create an amazing style of its own. I think there are some styles that you can take more away from than you can with other styles. So none of this means that these styles suck completely, except for Taekwondo. None of them. <laughs> with my personality, I'm going to joke and pick on some styles, so if there's something here that upsets you, make sure you comment and uh, get really upset with me below and we'll have a rational conversation about it later. Like I said, we're gonna be ranking these martial arts styles right here. Ta -da! Okay, uh, similar to a lot of education systems, F being the worst, A being the best, and then S being a little bit better. Uh, somebody explained it to me last time, but I don't remember. Anyway, so we're gonna start off here with Judo. Judo is a Japanese style. I believe it came before karate. Um, it became very sport-based, but not in a bad way. It takes a lot of takedowns. I think that if you know judo, instead of using striking and being able to punch somebody, inflict damage that way, um, you're using the ground to inflict damage, understanding body position and balance. Uh, judo, I, I, I hold judo in pretty high regards, I'm not going to lie. Also, all judo of this is, is just so, totally my yeah. opinion on stuff that I value. So, I apologize if this hurts anybody's feelings. Anyway, that being said, Judo, we're going to give, uh, because of the fact that Judo does not involve any striking, which I'm a huge fan of striking, uh, I'm going to go Judo C tier. And I know this can be, con this is, this, Judo has one of the most highly regarded black belts, I think, of any style that involves belt rankings, aside from, like, Jiu-Jitsu. I think it's, in my opinion, it's one of the most highly regarded ones. Uh, I think they might be able to do submissions in some styles. It depends. Uh, I'm sure they're de just not negligent. Okay, so the next one's going to be... Boxing. Boxing, boxing. Uh, obviously I is know awesome. Boxing. Great sport. Um, it is a martial art, in my opinion, because anytime you're yeah. moving your body, you're creating art. Um, just like dancing is creating art. Boxing is yeah. limited in a lot of ways that a lot of these styles aren't. Um, being able to only use hands. It's great for head movement, stuff like that. I like the idea of being able to throw kicks. Obviously, like, look at my channel and you'll pretty easily answer that question yourself. I enjoy watching boxing. I like, I like how it will be helpful for self-defense, but I do think that there's some important stuff there that boxing misses out on. But with that being said, I'm going to give boxing B tier. I'm still gonna give boxing B tier because you can take about a year's worth of boxing, be able to kick the average person's butt 100%. I'm, there's no doubt about that. Okay, moving on to Kung Fu. Kung Fu is kind of a blanket term for a lot of different Chinese martial arts styles. We're going to talk about the average thing. We're going to do our best to talk about the average when we talk yeah. about these styles. I mean that a lot of these styles are going to have schools within them that are crummy. 
Okay. There are going to be schools within them that are phenomenal. Obviously, it depends on how good the teacher is and how well you learn and what kind of stuff they're actually teaching you from that style and how true they are to its application. I think on average, if you walk into a style that is based off of Kung Fu or is within that realm, um, you're going to get something that's a slightly watered down version of what they taught a couple hundred years ago. Kung Fu is going to be our first D tier. I'm sorry. If you have any reasoning on why you think I'm wrong, comment below. I will read it. Uh, with Kung Fu, I love the idea of hand trapping and, and using parries and movements like that to work against your opponent. It's but a very for me, tricky. It's, it's a very tricky. Uh, these are all um, gut instincts based on what I feel. You, um, you know what I no. feel, and I'm making this video right now in the present. So maybe I'll change my mind in the future. But for right now, D tier. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to Lethwe or Letwe, I think is how it's supposed to be pronounced. If I had like, uh, yes. a little bit I more about doing you know, the... knowledge to I've me, I've got to react more I'd, to Lethwe. I'd have that answer, so. but I don't. So. Lethwe, Lethwe, maybe I'll just say it both ways each time, is a lot like Muay Thai, if you're familiar with Muay Thai. Elbows, yeah. clinching, knees, long strikes, like roundhouse kicks, a fairly squared stance. But in Lethwe, Lethwe, you also get the ninth. The ninth limb, which is oh. your noggin. Your dome piece gets to smack people around. I think this is a ruthless style. Um, Dave LaDuke has recently made this popular. Probably the forerunner of uh, kind of bringing popularity or bringing, making Lethway a more, I'm not going to say a household name, but a more martial arts household name. I didn't know about it until I heard about him, not going to lie. But after having watched it, uh, I'm not a fan of watching it because like once it comes down to just real nasty, ruthless brutalness, uh, I'm not a big fan. I don't like watching bare knuckle boxing for the same reason. But we're gonna go eight to eight. anytime you can learn how to manipulate somebody's body and also learn how to strike and use all of the elements you possibly can from your body, uh, it's usually pretty useful. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about capoeira. Capoeira is a, uh, I'm sure in its traditions, it was a little less dance related. Capoeira is all about the kicks. Um, really flowing movements where you have to understand body control. I think it has a really cool base in understanding how to move your body. I don't know as much about capoeira as I do some of these other styles. I've I taken mean, probably five sure. of these styles uh, in my past. I've never taken capoeira. Um, from what I've seen from capoeira, capoeira. Uh, I probably would take a couple months of it, but I wouldn't invest a lot of my time in it. Um, and because of that, it's going to be our first it's going to be our first F tier. I said this earlier. That doesn't mean you can't use anything from it. Do they have powerful kicks? Yes. I don't think it's the most efficient form of movement. Um, so for me, it's going to be an F tier. I'm not going to put anything E tier because I feel like E tier is kind of a made up thing. I, I get it. It's weird that we don't involve E in the education system in the U.S. Uh, e for me always meant excellent. We're gonna. That's going to bother me. We're just going to keep E as like a non thing. Otherwise, I guess Capoeira would go in E. Okay, moving on to jiu-jitsu. Uh, we're going to lump together Japanese and Brazilian here because, uh, frankly, I'm not going to type out two different ones. For me, jiu-jitsu is ground wrestling with the intent to submit your opponent through strikes or submissions. Either one. I'm fine with either one. A lot of jiu-jitsu schools teach from standing up. I think jiu-jitsu is an awesome player to the game. If you have some form of striking background, I think it's imperative that you also learn wrestling. I don't think you should learn one without the other. With that being said, if you have jiu-jitsu, I don't think that you should learn just jiu-jitsu. I think you should also get some striking in there. I don't have a lot of bad things to say about jiu-jitsu. I have done talks about in the past about how it's become a little more gentrified. It's become a little sport-driven, which is natural because when people take martial arts, it's not always for the same reason. There's three categories on average that you fall into when you take martial arts. There's recreational. I want something to do on the weekends. There's sport. I want to be able to win something and achieve a goal. And then there's street, pretty much which is I want to be able to fight somebody if I have to. Um, you can get some great knowledge out of each of the three of these. On average, the schools are leaning more towards the sport, which is fine. That's the same thing that happened to karate a bit ago, and people are now not talking so nice about karate. If you want to hear more about that, I'll put a card right here. Anyway, we're still going to give jiu-jitsu the A tier. Great belt ranking system, competition-based stuff leads for tons of growth and skill. Jiu-jitsu, A tier. Jeet Kune Do, I'm probably going to catch some flack on this one because the idea of Jeet Kune Do is supposed to be more of a philosophy than a martial arts style. This is obviously brought up by Bruce Lee. It caused a great influence on tons of people who were in martial arts. It is becoming more of a style as things go on because as you repeat something and you want to repeat something to a large scale of people, then you kind of have to make it conform to what a style is. So I do think Jeet Kune Do is becoming a bit of a style. Actually, Fei Sensei is trained in Jeet Kune Do, which 
makes it a style. I love the idea of freedom and mobility included. that Jeet Kune Do gives you. Um, as far as what I think the average instructor brings to the table, uh, this is another one of those where I don't know a ton about it, so I'm just going to go with my gut. And my gut says... I like the freedom, I like the mobility, I like the I, the concepts of it. I'm going to give Jeet Kune Do C tier. And that's because of the ability for you to conform things and make them work for you rather than being a sturdy, consistent system in itself. Surely you would have known at some point this was going to come up. Karate. My whole brain is Sensei Seth. Like, I am a karate teacher, you know? K teaching kids karate is one of my favorite things to do on this planet. So obviously I'm going to be a little bit biased towards this one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Karate is awesome because I think when karate is taught correctly, you go over takedowns, you go over punches, kicks, katas, you go over values and things like honesty, courage. It's a very traditional style, so you get that kind of enlightenment in a way. Um, in our particular style, we went over a lot of the takedowns from judo, but then we also went over a lot of the ground wrestling too. So for me, it was a very complete style. And I, in my opinion, as long as you spar, I think that you can take away from any of these styles, as long as you're actively pressure testing it and making sure that it works for you. With that being said, I know we said we'd go based off of the average, and unfortunately the average of karate right now isn't what it used to be. Like I mentioned, due to the idea of mass scaling and wanting to be able to teach as many people as possible, in order to do that you kind of have to cut down the details a little bit and make it work for more people rather than being able to one-on-one -on -one teach somebody, which is the most effective way to teach martial arts. Um, karate is... In the, it's a it's C tier for now we're gonna get there and it's gonna be because of this channel and other channels like Jesse's and karate culture and Wonder Boys and we're going to bring we will make karate amazing again don't worry we'll bring we're coming back we're coming back okay next let's move on to wrestling and no I'm not talking about WWE we're talking about pin somebody to the floor try and score points over a couple minutes round wrestling is probably the most popular out of people who do it right now out of all of these because if you take into account all the kids in high school that are doing it and if you think about it it's what we wanted for karate we wanted to be able to put karate into the school system to make the average person more adapted towards defending themselves now wrestling used to have submissions in it uh it doesn't now it's become a little bit more safe because we want kids to be able to practice it in high school uh, i think that once again we talk about boxing where if you put this person in this program for a year they should be able to kick the average person's butt and i, I think that holds true to wrestling too but, with that being said, it's the counterpart to boxing. Taking away the ability to strike takes a lot away from the style itself. Most wrestlers do move on to do MMA and things like that, so it does add more to it. We are going to give wrestling the same ranking as boxing here, though. Uh, I think they're very similar. They're usually grouped into the same conversation because they are so stylistically dependent on one thing, um, but also very useful at the same time. We talked about being dependent on one thing. Now let's talk about being dependent on self-defense. We talked about the three different things, the recreation, the sport, the self-defense. This is something that prides itself on being strictly a self-defense art. On average, I think Krav Maga has a name that is uh, becoming more closely associated with stuff like karate. I think that people usually look down on a little bit more, and I think that's strictly because of when you see something online, you see somebody applying a technique to a standing opponent, the reason that people like the validity of things like Muay Thai and Judo and Jiu Jitsu and stuff like that is because you see it in sport that resembles the actual style so similarly that, that it gives you confidence that it works. Uh, when it some, comes to stuff like Krav Maga, you don't see a lot of sparring, I'm sure some do, but because you don't see it in action that often, it's kind of hard to believe if it's true, and especially in an age where we're filled with the, uh, with the capability of sharing stuff to the internet. There's great Krav instructors like Ryan Hoover out there who are, you know, obviously showing great stuff. If you haven't followed him at Aperture, make sure you do. Don't tell him though that I complimented him. Ryan, if you're watching this, it's whatever, you know. Krav, Krav's okay, I guess. But the uh, the idea, we talk about the average and I'm gonna put Krav Maga on the same average as karate. I think there are too many people who are trying to teach a scaled version of the martial art which kind of brings down the average. One of the martial arts styles on the list of things that I've done in the past uh, or actually am currently doing right now is Muay Thai. Muay Thai, I've been really trying to dive into Muay Thai a little bit more recently. Uh, a lot of the training that I do is partner to partner but a lot of the stuff that I've been doing has been sparring with people who are trained in Muay Thai and trying to pick up things as I go. Um, oh, yeah, I, I teach karate in a Muay Thai too. facility uh, through people that I'm good friends with now at this point so I really get to be embraced in, in some of the stuff that they do. I think Muay Thai is awesome. Uh, like I mentioned, the sport behind it is so closely similar to how they train and how they practice, which 
superiorly elevates the game. Muay Thai is awesome, lots of clinch work, lots of body manipulation of your opponent, knees and elbows, things that are not usually regulate. Uh, Muay Thai I'm a huge fan of, it promotes toughness. Uh, the squared style is not my favorite. I like to be able to fight at a longer distance, but that doesn't mean it's not useful. Muay Thai though, has my respect 100%, not that these other ones don't, I guess I probably shouldn't say that. Anyway, Muay Thai, A tier. I put it the same level as Letway, Lethway, and <laughs> and Jiu Jitsu. So we have two left here. Um, one of them gets a lot of flack in the martial arts community, and the other one also gets a lot of flack in the martial arts community. Uh, one of these I have actually taken in the past for a short period of time, and that is Taekwondo. Uh, Taekwondo. <clears throat> Taekwondo. A lot of you have heard me call Taekwondo safe space karate in the past. Uh, Nicely done. Three, four, five, six. He got several points there. The blue player did excellent as well. Uh, Taekwondo is awesome for a lot of different reasons. Uh, however, doing, uh, the average Taekwondo, Taekwondo school little, now yeah, yeah. is promoting forms, which is great. I, I've talked about it, why I like katas in the past. Kicks and light spark. Because of this, it allows people to get their belt ranked much faster, which ends up to the three-year black belts. Um, I'm not super big of a fan of any system that is like, hey, if you pay for the whole thing right now, we'll guarantee that you get your black belt eventually. I think a lot of the schools that are McDojos and money grabbers come from that Taekwondo background because you can so easily promise uh, progression and quick progression at that. And I don't think any martial arts style should be here real quick, here's how you get good at fighting. With that being said, it is great when you are focused on something that you want to be sport-based, and even recreation-based. This is great for recreation, it's great for cardio, it's great for getting your heart rate up, it's great for sport. When it comes to street application, uh, unless you're doing like uh, specific, learning from specific people, when it comes to like ITF and stuff like that, rather than WTF, you can still get a lot from Taekwondo, but as a whole, without taking any other styles, I have to give Taekwondo D tier. Uh, there's a lot of my kicks that I wouldn't be able to throw as well as I do now if it wasn't for Taekwondo, but it's not enough for me to give it a C tier or higher. Which leads us to Aikido. The reason I put Aikido last is because I've never done Aikido. Um, it gets probably the most hate in the community right now, and it's due to stuff like Steven Seagal. There have been people who come out from the Aikido community who have been like pressure testing it and trying it, and, and what happens is you realize that you have to change some things but I'd also be willing to bet those people who changed things coming from Aikido also had a lot of things that they took from Aikido. With that being said I think uh, based on the ability for the average person who comes out of Aikido to be able to defend themselves and fight uh, and feel equipped with good reason to be able to fight somebody on the street uh, 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 I'm going to go with my gut here and give Aikido an F. That doesn't mean that it's bad but out of the list of these I think there's just different levels. Uh, and what you're probably noticing here is that I didn't give anything an S tier. And your first thought might be that the best style is something that has no style, that is a conglomeration of everything that you find here. Um, and you could argue that that's true. You might be thinking it's because I think that none of these have hit their, per their peak capabilities, that you should always be evolving and you should always be adding. Um, you could argue that too. But in all actuality, the only reason that I haven't put anything here at S tier is because there's only one true thing that works in all scenarios. It is a Meridote. It's the style of all styles. I was lucky enough to train with Master Ken a while ago, and let me tell you, it really opened my eyes to what works. Oh. I mean, you've got the Hurricane, you've got the Ugly Face. I feel like that's not right, but it also seems a little right. I mean, what other belt style has an 11th degree black belt? It what? Just... I'm Mary Dote. Also, I've heard that people in Ameridote can grow better it's mustaches. Really uh, I wanted to bring in a specialist Mer on Ameridote to make sure you guys understand why Ameridote is the only S tier. So without further ado, Master Ken, let them know. Oh. I'm Master Ken. And remember, it's not a Maradote, it's F tier. Oh. Now get the F out of tier. Please stop the going. Thank you for stopping by, Master Ken. If you guys haven't yet seen the video that me and Master Ken did a while I back think on I, the channel, I think I've seen him before. Right 
Also, he recently started a cameo account to bless you guys with personalized messages <coughs> from Master Ken himself to you to help you figure out how to use Ameridote to be your best self. And you can find him there. I'll put the link below. Please keep in mind that out of all of the things on this list, you can take something away from each of these different martial arts styles and add them to your own journey. Personally, I hope that I get a chance to work on all of this stuff throughout my lifetime and maybe I can document it and put it on here. Don't take this as an opportunity to bash any of these styles, but instead I implore you to take this as an opportunity to see where your holes are and figure out how you can fill them in best. Uh, make sure you like, turn on the notifications, and until next time, if you don't subscribe, I will punch you until you throw sidekicks. <laughs> I see that one before, man. Um, I forget, man. <laughs> Now I understand what a Maradote is, man, because, you know, kicking somebody in the nuts. <laughs> oh, man, that, that was a good time, man. I'll, I'll react to that one next time, because, um, you know, it, uh, along with uh, Sensei uh, stuff, I will react other of, of the tier list from Sensei uh, stuff. And along with the other videos that um used to, but yeah, but um, you know, I think I will learn with um something new here because um it's probably gonna take a long time for me to do it. Along with um taekwondo, uh, jinkundo, uh, kung fu or wushu, I believe. Um, I mean, there are, I mean, there are different ways for me to learn from, you know, wherever, um, you want to, but, um, but you get the point, but comment down below, what is your, you know, what is your favorite fighting style you want to learn, 